Jane Kim, and it's an honor to be here with you today. Um, I'm so excited to present on the topic of Homo sapiens fossils from the Korean Peninsula, the very region where this conference is held. Uh, the Korean Peninsula plays a crucial role in understanding human evolution in Asia, as it was connected by land to the Eurasian continent due to the historical climate changes. Today's presentation will be organized as follows. First, I will provide a brief overview of the history and distribution of the Homo sapiens fossil discoveries. And next, I will take a closer look at three significant Homo sapiens fossils, the oldest known fossils from the peninsula and some notable uh, fossils. And finally, I will conclude uh, with a review of current research trends and offer a suggestion for future research. Uh, to date, a total of 16 sites on the Korean Peninsula have been investigated for Homo sapiens fossils. These include 14 caves, one rock shelter site, and one open air site. A nationwide cave survey has been ongoing in North Korea since the 1960s, when research into palletic size first began. The first four hominid fossils on the peninsula were discovered in 1970s in Sungmi-san Cave. And then many additional fossils were found in the limestone regions around the Daedong River Basin, is the near of the capital, Pyongyang. In South Korea, uh, fossils are found in the Tanyang region, also where the limestone formations are prominent. You can see Tanyang region, and this is the Daedong River Basin. Uh, let's now examine the Homo sapiens fossils discovered on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, we have fossils that North Korea classifies as archaic Homo sapiens. There are three fossils. And first, Sunisan Cave has contains the first so many fossils discovered in the North Korea. And fossils were found in the both upper and lower level of the caves, and they set up teeth in one scaphala were found in the lower level. These fossils have not been directly dated, but biostratigraphy suggests that they date back to the end of middle to late Pleistocene. And Yokpo Man from Daeyeongdong Cave is a child fossil about seven to eight age old, old at the time of death. Primitive traits were visible and uh, it's also not directly dated, but fossils and suggested over 100,000 years old. And the Seokseongmi site, uh, it was estimated to be around 300,000 years old, and I will revisit this important site later in this presentation. There are also many fossils of modern Homo sapiens. Just take a look at some of this. The Rimgyang Cave, uh, most recently investigated between 2020 and 2021. This site has elite teeth and skull fragments, though no detailed analysis have been published yet. ESR dating estimates the fossil to be approximately 23,000 years old. And Mandali Cave, it is also one of the most famous caves, and fragments of the parieta bone and mandible of middle-aged men were investigated. Uh, it has a typical dolichro cranium and with a simple suture lines. While it has a high and rounded and with a straightforward and large brain capacity. Uh, the fauna remains and artifacts suggest it dates to the late, late Pleistocene. 
and one more side is Nengjeong Cave. Fragments of the parietal bone and mandible of a middle-aged man were investigated, and the parietal bone is very thick and bulging. Also, the roots of the first mandibular molars were very robust. Uh, the fossils were estimated about 43,000 to 50,000 years old by several dating methods. And in addition, there are also Kuncheon Cave, or Jumi Cave, Ryongnan Cave, and so on. Next part is in South Korea. There are two sites. One is Sangshi Rock Shelter and what is Kunan Cave. They are both located in Danyang. The Sangshi Rock Shelter holds the first Paleolithic hominid fossil discovered in the South Korea. And the skull and scapula were found here, found here in at the time uranium series dating places the fossil at around 3,000 years old. Uh, as the only known Paleolithic skull fossil in South Korea, I think it requires further scientific analysis and re-examination. And next is the Kunan Cave. This site has elite fossils such as phalanges and metacarpars and metatarsars and otalus. These remains were first examined during the second survey in 1988 and later during the fifth survey in 2011. A radiocarbon dating estimates the fossil to be around BP 43,000 years old. Uh, let's take a look at three important fossil discoveries. The first one is Seokseongmi Yujeok. Uh, this site discovered in 2000 and it holds the oldest Homo sapiens fossils found on the Korean Peninsula, known as Hade Men. The fossils were found in the mass of lava near a quarry. The remains represent three individuals, uh, an adult female and an adolescent and a child. However, it's important to know that the bones might have been deformed due to the heat surrounding lava. In the North Korea, thermal luminance and polymagnetic dating indicate these fossils are approximately 300,000 years old. Uh, the relationship between these dating methods and is significant because these, uh, these methods are not usual, but these fossils are linked to the volcanic eruption. Uh, hopefully, further research, including virtual reconstruction, uh, will provide deeper understanding of these remains. And next, Ryongo Cave. Uh, it was explored between 1980 and 1981. A total of 10 well-preserved human fossils were discovered from second layer, along with further fossils and artifacts. Recent dating of the sites indicates that the lower part of the second layer is approximately 72,000 years old, and why the upper part dates to around 47,000 years. This is a Nungo cave and this is how, where the dating was established. The 10 individuals vary in sex and age and while the exact location is uncertain, but they can be probably categorized into two periods Fossils from the lower level, representing the early period, and those from the upper level, representing the late period. The, on the right one, uh, on the left one, uh, you have an early period fossil, estimated to be male around 35 years old. 
the skirt is very elongated and featuring a well-developed brow ridges and distinct saucer crest. And the mandible is large and robust with a well-developed chin. And on the right, we have a late period fossil, likely a female aged 30 to 35. While similar in morphology to the earlier one, this girl is more bulging, in, indicating a larger brain capacity. Additionally, the mandible shows more pronounced chin. And third one is Cheongpade Cave. Uh, it is also situated along the Daedong River Basin, and it was investigated from 1999 to 2004. During this period, a total of five human fossils were discovered, making it one of the most actively studied cave up to the present day in North Korea. The how many fossils were discovered from 8th and 12th and 13th layer, and dating estimates indicate the following. The oldest and layer 12th and 30th. These dating results highlight the significance of Cheongpane Cave in understanding the timeline of human fossils in the region. I will now briefly describe the hominid fossils from each layer. The layer 8, uh, the maxilla from layer 8 is a very large and thick featuring a bumpy pallet surface that her measurements are similar to those of early fossils found in the Ryungo cave. And the mandible from layer 12 exhibits some primitive characteristics, particularly in the waist and angle of the ramus. However, its newly advanced closely resembles those of modern humans. In layer 3, there was total of three individuals, and the specimen of the right, ladder number two, has a very thick mandible and with a wide structure. The chin is formed, but appears weak. Uh, as we we'll look to the future of Homo sapiens research on the Korean Peninsula, I think there are some several key areas warrant attention. Before I look to the suggestion, I will summary the recent research trends first. In North Korea, uh, I use many resources from North Korea descriptions. Um, as you know, North Korea has revealed significant discoveries, but limited access to data poses challenges for researchers. The political and social characteristics of North Korea have resulted in unique research methods and theories, so that have it has prevented international comparative studies with other human fossils. However, increasingly, North Korea has recently made steps towards openness by publishing and citing research research in foreign journals. This should indicate a growing objective attitude, including redating previously excavated sites like Ryungo Cave. In contrast, South Korea faces challenges in human fossil research due to a smaller number of primary data and fewer researchers in the field. To address these limitations, archaeological studies such as those focused on stone tools are employed to complement research on human evolution and migration. So, for the future research, I think there are some several key suggestions. First is 
reliable dating to address existing mistrust regarding dating methods of North Korea, it is essential to supplement reliable dating data. I think this will enhance the accuracy of our understanding of fossil timelines. And second one is DNA analysis. Uh, it can provide valuable insights and is crucial to compensate for the scarcity of fossils in Korean situation. It can also include uh, extracting genetic material from sediment. And second, academic exchanges. I think between North and South Korea, each with its own characteristics and research achievements and strengths, will, it will foster collaboration and lead to further research synergies. And lastly, uh, foremost, continued research efforts. Uh, ongoing efforts to discover new human fossils are vital. Despite the limited awareness of Homo sapiens fossils from the Korean Peninsula within the academic community, uh, these findings represent an um, important resource. They have the potential to generate new discussions and verify various hypotheses currently under consideration. Thanks for listening.